In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions. We're going to be diving back into that tropical cyclone as well, some upcoming severe weather as well. Let's just get straight into things though. And first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery. And as you can see, there is some showery activity still going on here for the four corner states down here, uh, as well as some showery activity and thunderstorm activity up here in the upper Midwest also. Uh, so we can see a bit of that happening. We also see that up here uh, for eastern Canada, as well as portions of the Great Lakes and the Northeast are experiencing some of uh, these thunderstorms and showers. And then also down here, for the southeast in the Gulf Coast, we see some of these tropical thunderstorms around for uh, the southeast all the way down through uh, the deep south and some of the Gulf states down there as well. Now let's work our way from west to east like we always do. And you can see that we do have some of these lighter showers around for some of these desert states like Arizona, New Mexico, as well as southern Utah, uh, and a little bit of southern Colorado as well. We're seeing this activity. So these are mostly lighter and very, very spotty, but you could experience one of those this morning. Uh, we can see up here in the upper Midwest, we have some severe thunderstorm warnings coming through. So we know these thunderstorms are pretty bad and pretty dangerous up there. We also see some of that further north a little bit. So all these areas in here, uh, it's mostly this front edge here. Uh, this area in here where we're really watching because usually that front line has the most potential because it's reaching these very ripe conditions. After that front line passes, usually the second line or third line of storms doesn't have as much potential because that first line has already kind of eaten up some of it. So that's usually how that works. That's why oftentimes, you know, the first, like let's say you're seeing multiple thunderstorms in a day. Oftentimes, the first one will be the worst one. That doesn't always have to be the case, but that just happens to be true a lot of the time. Uh, we do see that there is some showers moving off some of the Great Lakes there into Michigan. Uh, so we see some of this taking place, and, and some of these even look like thunderstorms up there for northern Michigan. But for the most part, heavier showers at least is what I would say is taking place. Uh, we can see that down here for the deeper south, portions of the southeast as well, we're seeing this showery activity, thunderstorms around as well. Uh, so we're seeing just a lot of this activity down here. Um, and all of this needs to be watched. Obviously, we can see what's interesting is some of the flow is heading like this off of Texas. And then we're seeing on the eastern end, some of it is heading into the United States there, into Florida and Georgia. But, all, I mean, really, we can see all these areas seeing thunderstorms of some sort throughout the day today. Uh, we are watching for that tropical activity down here. This is expected to develop and potentially head up into Texas. We'll take a look at that in a little while. Percentages have gone up on this tropical cyclone forming, so we will be taking a deeper dive into that a little bit later on. We can see that offshore of the southeast, we do have some showers nearby, but nothing on shore at this point. But you can't rule out any rainfall happening for some of the eastern United States there. Um, and then we can see that for the Northeast, there doesn't appear to be any showers onshore right now or really in the Northeast United States, but we can see that in Canada, some of these look like they might move across into the New England states later today, so we can't rule that out either. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the upcoming pattern. We're going to take a look at that tropical cyclone as well as some of that upcoming severe weather. All right, now here we are taking a look at the upcoming pattern. I just want to move us towards this upcoming afternoon, and we can see that there will be some showery and thunderstorm activity here in the southeast, as well as the upper Midwest up here. We're going to see these impacting these regions. And we can see some continued showers going on here for the four corner states down through Mexico as well. Pretty quiet in between those areas, though, however. As we move towards Tuesday afternoon this is going to be july 12th or tomorrow from the time i'm making this video we see some expansion of these thunderstorms and showers all the way up and down the east coast here we see some extension of this as well up to the midwest as well through the great lakes like we saw the day prior which is today from the time i'm making this video uh, we can see for the four corner states we see that continuation of those showers down there as well so we're seeing all of these things kind of just evolve but for the most part continue for wednesday july 13th we can see that we still see these showers connected mostly from the upper Midwest to the Northeast. And then we see also these showers down here for the Southeast again. Uh, so we're seeing that continue and then all the way around for the four corner states, all the way up the Rockies. We're seeing some of those continued showers and thunderstorms as well. Again, Wednesday, July 13th there. Now for Thursday, July 14th, we're seeing again up and down the East Coast activity is taking place. Uh, so for the you know, this has been the pattern we've been in. This is the pattern we're expected to be in. And we are going to have to take a look and see when this is expected to come to an end. 
For the Rockies in the four corner states, we see continuation of those showers still through Thursday the 14th. Friday the 15th here, we can see that the southeast still has these thunderstorms and showers around as well as for the upper Midwest and then a little bit there for the northeast and still some for the four corner states as well. So we're seeing kind of some spotty areas still seeing these showers and thunderstorms. Saturday, we can see that down here for the southeast, we're still seeing some of that activity and for the Midwest, so Saturday, July 16th, but it looks a little bit more uh, receded. I think this might be our tropical cyclone right there. So this one has it kind of just hanging out this time around and maybe loop back around just like that. Let's draw that arrow, just like that. But we're really gonna have to wait and see. Uh, I, I think this is gonna be one of those ones that's a nail biter until it develops and then the spaghetti model guidance will come out and we'll get a little bit of a clearer picture into what direction to expect that tropical cyclone to head in. I think the biggest thing right now is will it develop or will it not develop? Uh, so I don't want us to go too ahead of ourselves at this point. Let's get to Sunday, July 17th, and we still see some activity down here for the southeast, still some for the plains and through the upper Midwest. I think the plains that hasn't been seeing activity, but now they are, um, but still the four corner states in the upper Midwest. But we now see the areas in between also seeing some activity. Let's see, Monday... July 18th, we can see that there is some uh, thunderstorm shower still taking place to this point. Um, so just the activity does not look to really stop anytime soon. We see that for Monday, or better yet, this is Tuesday, July 19th. We still see this area there in the southeast. And I mean, really outside of that, the only area seeing some activity is, is Arizona and New Mexico here. Outside of that, very quiet from coast to coast, as you can see. And then finally, for Wednesday, July 20th, we still see the southeast activity, but really outside of some minor activity here along the western seaboard and the southwest, we don't see much going on. So the southeast from, you know, day one through day 10, it seems like activity is not really going to slow down uh, whatsoever. So once we take a look here at the total precipitation through the next 10 days, there's no surprise that there's very minor amounts expected almost everywhere except for here in the southeast where we expect a ton. So if you're anywhere in the whites, we're expecting practically no precipitation. If you're anywhere in the grays, we're expecting a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch of precipitation. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. And then your yellows will be an inch to two inches. Then your reds will be two to five inches of precipitation. We see a lot of that for the four corner states, a little bit of the upper Midwest, a little bit of the Northeast, but almost all of the Southeast has this red two to five inch region of precipitation expected. Uh, so we do expect a lot of precipitation down here for the Southeast. Obviously, like I said, from day one to day five, it, or day one to day 10, it really just does not slow down. Now, the brown slash gray areas down there in the deeper south, that's where we expect 5 to 10 inches of precipitation for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and then the Florida Panhandle as well. Uh, so that is a whole lot of precipitation to receive in a 10-day period. Uh, that's an inch, uh, that's half an inch to an inch per day on average for 10 days in a row. So really crazy stuff down there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the upcoming temperature pack. Now here we are taking a look at that upcoming temperature pattern. As you can see for Monday, July 11th, we have warmer temperatures expected throughout all of these regions for the West Coast down through the South Central United States and even up into the Northeast as well. We see some of these. Uh, it's mostly the Southeast where we're going to see cooler temperatures for the entire 10-day period and then also up here for the Rockies and the Northern Plains there. So Tuesday, we can see that the Southeast still has cooler than normal conditions, mostly warmth almost everywhere else. Wednesday, July 13th, we still see cooler conditions down here in the southeast. And now for the Great Lakes as well on this frame, but mostly warmth everywhere else. Thursday, we see that a lot of the eastern United States has cooler than normal conditions. There is a few areas here in between that do see warmer conditions, but for the most part, cooler in the east, colder in the or warmer in the west, better yet. Friday is a lot of the same. We see neutral to colder temperatures there in the east for the most part, and then much warmer out west for the central and western United States. Uh, same story here on Saturday, July 16th, except we only see those cooler temperatures mostly for the southeast, uh, and then it's warmer everywhere else. You see, when we see consistent storminess and cloudiness, that doesn't allow your temperatures to reach your average temperatures usually. 
So that's why we're probably expected to stay much cooler according to this model. Sunday, July, 17th, same story. Southeast is looking cooler. Everywhere else is above normal at this point. Uh, and then for Monday, something interesting happens here. We see cooler for the southeast, but also cooler for a lot of the northwest here in this corridor. Usually this can mean that the main area of warmth is headed eastward, so we'll see if that ends up taking place. Yeah, it kind of does, actually. We see cooling overall for the entire west coast and then much warmer here for the central United States and even for the northeast as well uh, there. And by Wednesday, it does appear like this ridge is definitely headed eastward, so uh, that was pretty spot on, actually. We see the southeast is still holding on to some of that cooler air, but definitely the west coast here of the United States is really, really cooling off here towards the end of the model run. Now, let's go ahead and move on and talk about that five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Now, here we are taking a look at this. As you can see, over the next five days, we do have a 30% chance of tropical development. Uh, so we need to watch this very closely. Again, we don't really know if it's going to hit Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, or anywhere else at this point uh, because we've seen model guided suggest all of the above. Uh, but what really matters is will it develop or will it not? And then once it does or doesn't, it's from that point where we can decide where things are headed uh, from there. But for now, I'm going to update you guys daily on this probability forecast. And as of now, there's a 30% chance of development. And I think yesterday there was a 20%. So we have gone up by 10% here in development. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about the severe weather outlook. Here. Now here's the day one categorical outlook and as you can see in the lighter green areas here, we have two of them actually, one there for the southeast and then one here for areas a little bit further north and further west. Uh, those lighter green areas is where we have a general thunderstorm risk, that's where general thunderstorms are expected, but anything is possible to heat every watch warning and advisory. Here in this northern one, we also have a darker green region, and this is where we have a marginal risk at severe weather. That's where we expect isolated severe weather to potentially occur. And then this yellow area there for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes is where we have a slight risk at severe weather, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to take place within that region. Now for day two here on Tuesday, July 12th, we have three general thunderstorm risk areas. Again, anything is possible, so heat every watch, warning, and advisory. We have two darker green regions there as well, where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. And then we have our, or our slight risk area up there for the northeast and mid-Atlantic, where we expect scattered severe weather to occur up there in the northeastern corner of the nation on Tuesday, July 12th. Now for day three, Wednesday, July 13th, we have one very large horseshoeing General thunderstorm risk there. Again, everything is possible. Heat every watch, warning, and advisory. But we do have this darker green marginal risk area all the way from Alabama through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and up into Virginia. Uh, that is where we expect the isolated severe weather to occur. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a th uh, four out of six still. Uh, I really feel like we have some time to go before we increase that confidence. We really need to wait until we see uh, any sort of clear direction with that tropical cyclone, that's when I might move up in the confidence. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Dennett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Colisi also. I would also like to thank our channel members, Cat Bite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.